Hey guys, in this episode we're going to be taking a look at some alternative foxing methods used by the gamekeeper on the estate. Whilst out and about, it's always a good idea to keep an eye out for footprints and other fox signs. A little reconnaissance reveals someone's moved in. Look at this displacement of earth footprints and fox scat here. So, I reckon he's walking up this roadway. So I'm going to walk out into this field and do a bit of a stake out, I think. But yes, we definitely have a fox here. A sure sign a fox is in the area. So one of the first jobs is to change the bait in the cage trap. Though they have to be checked every day, you, this time of year you have to change the bait probably every two to three days because it's still relatively mild, so flies uh, etc will take hold. Securing the bait to the arm inside the trap, closing the back door and then leaving a little enticement such as an open partridge at the front of the cage is a great way to catch foxes. They certainly do work as you can see here in this case this is a cub that we had earlier in the year. At this time of year they're not as effective as often the foxes are a little wise but they certainly work. Continuing along the roadway now as the road got wetter it was a little bit more easily to spot exactly where Mr or Mrs Fox uh, was walking so here you can actually see in a second where you've got footprints up the left hand side and also up the right hand side of this water they tend to not like getting their feet wet so they will avoid puddles so this looks like a great place to set a snare yeah he's been here mate Because it's on a roadway, the, the actual ground is still quite firm, so we need to hammer a little hole in so we can get the hazel stick in to be able to set the snare. The snare itself is attached to a cast iron weight, weighing roughly two stone, so that um, it will hold the fox in a position. It's not there to strangle the fox to death, but it is there to hold the fox there so that until the next day the snare can be checked. keeping the snare roughly four to six inches off the floor. Uh, the gamekeeper there just smears a little bit of mud around the uh, wire. That takes the shine off, uh, just so that if you've got a full moon then um, the, the fox can't actually spot the snare. Also covering the weight with a little bit of the vegetation as well as the cable leading up to the snare makes it that little bit harder to spot. difficult to spot but that's kind of the idea checking these traps every day we know that the fox is returning to the same area so we set a snare either side of the road once again here you can see a snare that worked for us earlier in the year as this fox was held in place until the next day it had managed to having said that drag the weight into the ditch I make a return to this area now um, the next evening um, I'm actually walked out into the field from where you saw me uh, do the initial video and uh, I'm looking to catch up with Charlie. Getting a little excited as I saw two eyes peering at me I then zoomed in to realise it was just a couple of roe deer. With just six days to go before the first shoot of the season it's time to check over on the pheasant shoot. Thank you. 
stopping the truck directly behind the pheasant cover I saw this one actually walking its way to me um, this video clip would be some nearly five minutes long so um, there was no rush I didn't even need to call the fox was simply making its way towards the pheasant cover uh, once it got near I started squeaking caught its attention and it came in textbook Well, this one turned out to be a vixen, not exactly a testing shot, came into around 70 yards. Now, one of the first things I will say is whenever you've just shot a fox, always keep calling and keep scanning round. This one was a very long way off, but it was actually in the same field. I'd not even moved positions. Uh, so always worthwhile making sure you doubly scan every field because if you're calling and you're concentrating on one fox, invariably another one can be coming in from even further away. In this case, it happens to be another two foxes, as you can see, that are coming in. So we've got an extra two foxes in play with one already on the deck. Just like the first fox, this is a game of patience. It's already in the same field, and the other one you can see in the background there is also making its way slowly towards my location. Just so happens to be the pheasant pen, so we definitely need to take these guys out. It was exceptionally hard hit with the first one, but it needed a second follow-up shot to make sure of it. Around 10 minutes later, I still haven't moved from this point, so I've still got uh, two foxes down in the same field, uh, and number three hadn't gone too far away. Uh, seeing as the other ones had responded well to the call, uh, again, patience paid off. Uh, I stayed where I was, and fox number three came into play and once again a mouth squeak was enough for it to get in. You can see there though the fox is quite cautious. I've got the call on top of the truck um, 60 yards to my right plus I need this fox to move to the left anyway because the buildings are actually uh, behind it so it moves conveniently into the field uh, with just street lighting in the background off of one of the country lanes that's all that is and uh, so the shot is safe. And down goes number three. So there we go, a very productive evening that was, and I'm sure the farmer's very happy, and I'm also sure the pheasants will sleep a little easier tonight. A couple of nights later, I'm out on the neighbouring chute, and I've been invited back again to take care of a couple of foxes that have been spotted, and we see this one up on the bank a couple of hundred yards away. Notice here the fox's tail goes up and starts twitching around, a sure sign that you've got more than one in the area. And there you go, fox number two. So we have, yet again, two foxes in play. I had to walk quite a bit closer to those foxes before I uh, mouth squeaked it in and uh, yet again that one came in a treat. This time round the second fox isn't hanging around, this one bombed it right across the field and barely looked back so that one I'll have to wait for another time. 
checking on the second farm on the next night and you can see here a fox that doesn't really want to come in this one's very cautious indeed uh, the shot was actually 182 yards off of sticks which is about as far as you want to go really when you're shooting off of sticks luckily though there was no wind and the shot found his mark So that was two down that night. We had actually managed another fox in between then, a very mature dog fox, a nice big one. Unfortunately, I forgot to press the record button. Um, anyway, moving on a little later on in the evening, we've got another fox coming in. This one, though, isn't playing ball. It comes up to the reeds and won't come any closer and kind of sits behind there. I cannot see enough of it for me to be able to take the shot. So once again, we'll leave that one for another night. And there you go, that's what I've been up to for the last couple of weeks. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Take care, stay safe and happy shooting.